Would you like to stop for a hamburger? Boom, boom, boom. He said it was made of iron. The, the spindle didn't reach it. What's that? What did you say? Boom, it's alive. Boom, boom. His heart, can't you hear it? His heart is still beating. Midnight, the witching hour when the night is darkest. Our fears the strongest and our strength at its lowest ebb. Midnight, when the graves gape open and death strikes. How? You'll learn the answer in just a moment in Death is No End. And now, Murder at Midnight, Tales of Mystery and Terror by Radio's Masters of the Macabre. Our story by A.S. Guinness is Death is No End. Check. May 31st, next. May 31st, deposit, $9,840.74. 9842 Withdrawal, $6,302.16. Mitchell. One moment, dear. 6302.16. Check. Uh, let's not stop, Phyllis. It's almost midnight now. We've still June to tally. Let's plow right ahead, huh, dear? Yes, sir. June 1st, deposits $15,972.38. We stood there in the dim, deserted bank. Ooh, middle-aged clerk, checking other people's money. Behind us loomed the wire cages, two of them with their doors flung open. Mitchell and Phyllis Bagley, respectable employees. Mitchell and Bagley, new kind of animal, confined to their cages by day and let out at night. Perhaps all women take stock when they reach 40. Perhaps they all experience the thing I'm going through at this moment. A kind of clear, cold reality. Mitchell must have sensed the sudden surge of bitter hate. Phyllis, dear, what is it? One of your headaches? Nothing, Mitchell. Let's plow right ahead. Oh, you just wait, dear. When we leave the bank tomorrow evening and hop into our little car, two whole weeks in the Wisconsin woods alone together. Won't that be wonderful? Yes, Miss. Now, June 15th. Yes, yes, sir. Let's plow right ahead. Like obedient oxen. Now, June 15th. Deposit 7,000 for... What was that? I don't know. Hey, who put that box in my way? What's that light over there? Oh, it's only old Mike Hassler. He's drunk. Uh, who's there? Huh? Answer me, old plug. Oh, well, take it easy, Mike. It's Phyllis and I. Who? Oh, the Bagley's. <laughs> the good old Bagley's. I work it. Now, Mike, you'd better sleep it off. We'll be here another half hour. Night watchman, drunk. You don't like me, do you, Mrs. Bagley? Well, I ain't drunk. Just a little tonic. I need a little tonic every night. <laughs> a little tonic, eh, Miss Lomoy? You're an old drunk. Oh, Phyllis. And that tonic will kill you. Uh, Phyllis. Uh, that's all right, Miss Women are all like that. Tonic, kill me. <laughs> Mitchell. Yes? How old do you think I am? Seventy, Mike. Now, now, go over. Seventy? And... <laughs> yeah, that's what you think. Why, I'm. I won't tell you. Nope, you'll never guess. The doctor says he never saw a kicker like mine. <laughs> Made of iron. Nothing can kill this old heart of mine. Nothing but liquor. Eh? Makes it stronger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just. Listen to this old ticker, Mrs. Bagley. <laughs> you hear it? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Get him away from there. Come on now, Mike. Boom, boom. A little tonic every night. 
Drunken watchman. Everything was clear. I was 40 and my last chance had come. There. Poor old man, sleep it off. <laughs> In the president's office. <laughs> Mitchell, he drink like this every night hmm? on duty? Might? Oh, it's nothing. All the men in the bank know about it, <laughs> except the boss. Last ten years, old Mike has been hopping out for a half hour every night that day. The guild place around the corner. Mitchell, I'm leaving you. Hmm? I'm tired of this life, earning nothing a week, always counting the money other men have made for their women. I'm leaving you, Mitchell. Phyllis! From now on, I knew every step of the way. Maybe I'd been mapping this out unconsciously for years. But now I was in the driver's seat. Phyllis, darling, dearest, why? I know we don't earn much, but... Much? Eighty dollars a week together... Tell me how to make more, Phyllis. Please tell me anything, anything, so long as you'll stay with me. Tell me anything, Phyllis. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Phyllis. Phyllis, do you, do you realize what you're saying? Phyllis. Take it or leave it, Mitchell. Off the bank? As easy as making a withdrawal, Mitchell. Now, listen. We leave a plan for our vacation tomorrow after work. What? We come back here at 11.30 at night when that old fool Mike is out drinking. Phyllis. We'll be gone before he returns with a quarter of a million dollars to hide in the Wisconsin woods. It's foolproof, Mitchell. And it's the only thing that'll keep me with you. Well? Well, Phyllis, I, I want you. I need you so much, Phyllis. But I, I'm afraid. I knew I had him. The void in him was growing bigger. And I alone could fill it. <laughs> well, Phyllis, you lucky girl. Now make good use of these next two weeks. Put the roses back in your cheeks. Well, thank you, Mr. Whalen. I didn't know you cared. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Mitchell? Forget the bank. Yes, sir. You're, you're sure that... Oh, uh... positive, Mitchell. I give you permission to forget the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Phyllis, you know what this old workhorse of yours asked me earlier today? No, what? <laughs> he said... <laughs> he said, Mr. Whalen, if you can't spare me, I'll be... <laughs> I'll be willing to cancel my vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell's panic was rising as the hour drew close. I'd expected that. I knew that once up in the Wisconsin woods, I could calm his fears. 11.25 at night. We were a block away from the bank. At 11.30, we saw the old watchman leave by the back entrance. One minute later, we were parked in the alley beside the bank. And at work, disconnecting the burglar alarm on a big face. It's, it's all right now, Phyllis. The alarm's off. Start on the kids. What time is it? Stop worrying about the time. We've got 20 minutes before he returns. 20 to 12. There it is. Phyllis, it's all yours. Oh. Please, Phyllis, take it. What was that? What time is it, Phyllis? Control Phyllis. yourself. It's not 12 yet. You don't understand. He came back. Well, tell me what to do, Phyllis. Quick, quick, Phyllis. Act like we're checking our books. All right. He just he won't remember anything. He didn't remember last night's business when he said goodbye to us this afternoon. Come on. Yes, yes. Push the adding machine. Right behind you. Oh. Oh. Who's that? The hard-working Bagley's, Mike. Oh, they really keep you busy, don't they? Oh, yes, yes. What do you think of the crush of that guy, Gil? Gil? Uh, ten years have been going there, and just because I'm out of cash... Say, don't you two supposed to be going on your vacation? Vacation? Why, uh... Now that's safe. It's open. Hey, what goes on here? N nothing, Mike. Nothing. Put up your hands, both of you. Now, Mike... I'm taking no chances. Mike, you're acting silly. Stand back, Mrs. Bagley. You've known us for a long time, Mike. Well... We wouldn't do anything wrong. Nothing except... Phyllis! Oh, oh, you, you stabbed me, Phyllis. stabbed me. You can't kill me. You can't. Where's my gun? <laughs> Stop! Stop! Mr. Bindle! Die! Die! You missed my 
my heart. You missed it. My heart. My heart. <laughs> Go on up. To the burlap bag in the trunk. We'll clean this place up. We'll take his body to Wisconsin with us. <laughs> Mitchell's terror grew stronger as the night passed. I had to drive. The incident with the night watchman had destroyed what little courage he had. We were about an hour away from the woods when he had his worst attack. What's that? What? What? What's the matter, Mitchell? He, he said we couldn't kill it. He said we couldn't kill it. Hassler said we couldn't kill it. Mitchell, would you like to stop for a hamburger? Boom, boom, boom. It's made of iron, Mike. Said the spindle didn't reach it. It's still beating back. They're still beating. <laughs> Mitchell, what's wrong? Nothing. Nothing. Where are you going? I thought I heard some of the tools rattling in the trunk. As long as we stopped, I'll take a look. No, no, no. No, don't. 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 <laughs> there is, he's alive. Can't you hear it? It's still beating. Stop your hollering. Talking about Hassler, he's dead. And we're going on. When I got back into the car, Mitchell was unconscious, painted. I let him sleep while I drove north. I had some thinking to do. You can hide money any place, not a body. Somehow, I had to find a guy who would take us into the back country. A guy who wouldn't be coming back. A dead man in the trunk and a woman driving into the wilderness in the night, already thinking of her next victim. Murder has its own laws of progression, especially when it's... Murder! And now back to Murder at Midnight and Death is No End. In the depth of night, Phyllis Bagley drives towards the Wisconsin woods with her grim cargo. As the car crawled over the dirt roads, I kept staring through the windshield, watching for a lighted shack. Here in Indian Territory at five in the morning, I had to locate a guide to lead us into the woods. I see a light, Phyllis. Light where? Through the trees up ahead. Turn off the headlights. It's like a lantern or a flashlight coming this way. It's an Indian. Hello. Hello. <laughs> You lost? Yes, we arrived a little later than we expected. Not sure of the way. Eh, no good with our guides. Fishing? Yes, but we're different. We'd like a place where nobody else goes. Eh, once I best guide up here. Now I old man. Too bad. Oh, you don't look old at all. I'll bet you're still the best guide in this territory. You, you very kind lady. <laughs> How old do you think I am? Not more than 60, I'd say. <laughs> I don't tell you. Nobody know. I got secret. Really? Yeah. How to keep heart young. I tell you what. You so nice lady to me. I be your guy. You like? Why, that would be wonderful, but... We go now. Well, are you all prepared? I always ready, lady. <laughs> Sleep blanket on back. Ears, eyes in head. I prepared. I come in machine. Open the door, Mitchell. Mitchell. No, no, not again. Not again. My husband doesn't feel well. That's why we're up here. Oh, maybe I help him. Maybe I tell him secret of strong heart. The spot the Indian took us to was ideal. Impossible to find unless you'd been there. And it had a fast-flowing deep stream close by, deep enough and fast enough to swallow two bodies forever. Mitchell, 
Mitchum, go help him unload stuff in the car. I'll set the tent up. I'm not going near him. What's wrong with you? We're safe now. No, we're not. Safe except for you. Safe except for that Indian. Where did he come from out of the woods in the middle of the night, eager to lead us back into the woods without even going home? Why? Why did he talk about his heart like that? Mitchell, you'll stop that kind of drivel or else you'll never be... It's swift, ruthless murder. The cold kind. What's that? Like Phyllis. Phyllis. Widow from her hospital bed keeps sending out the same pitiful cry. It's the Why car radio, of course. Why? You must have left it on. He did it. He did it. Meanwhile, lean to the theory that Mike Hassler robbed the bank and disappeared. They claim as proof that the old man was irresponsible and heavily in debt. The bank management has ordered all its employees on vacation to report back to work immediately. Why did you turn the radio on? Me? Please, lady. Why me? Well, you were the only one near the car. <laughs> Why, I should. <laughs> Why should he indeed? And even if he did, it was an innocent favor. So the police believe my castler robbed the bank and vanished. This is an angle I hadn't even thought of. And the bank was calling us all home. Well, in a way, I was glad. I don't think I could have tolerated Mitchell alone much longer. I look forward to the night like a caged animal to freedom. Mitchell... What is it? Come out of the tent. It's time. What time is it? It's almost midnight. Yes, please, I... I anything but... Mitchell, we've gone over this before. This job is yours. You're in this as far as I am. But I... He's sound asleep under that tree. Here's the gun. Oh. 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 like a man with teeth. Every step closer to the Indian seemed to weigh him down further. I was determined that as long as we were involved in murder, Mitchell must not remain only partly guilty. Gun hand rose slowly, then... I can't! I can't! Oh, 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 oh. I didn't mean to. I didn't want but to. But you did. Come on. We've got to get them into the stream, both of them. The body's gone. Mitchell helped me dig a hole, bury the money, and cover it up again. Then... That is fine, Phyllis. Very. Light a cigarette for me, Mitchell. My hands are dirty. Mike Hassler is alive. Huh? Mike Hassler is not dead. No, 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 no. The police are now convinced beyond any doubt that... Car radio again. I shut it off and dismiss it from my mind. Faulty wiring. We left for home the following morning. Now I was worried about Mitchell. He sat beside me, quiet, rigid. I had no idea what he was listening for until... Phyllis. Yes? Stop the car. What for? You're only making believe. You hear it, you know you do. It's hard. Mitchell, listen to me. Back there in the woods, I would have killed you without a moment's hesitation. No. But I couldn't. You're part of my alibi. Now, you're in this as deep as I am. And if you insist on carrying on this way, you'll hang yourself. No, no, no. You hear it, too. You just don't want to admit you're it. You're insane. But you must. His heart, Hassler's still beating in the trunk. Hassler is dead and buried. But not his heart. The Indian, he heard it. He knew. Stop it. Stop it. You don't hear it. Boom, boom, boom. From the trunk. From Hassler's heart. It's in the trunk, is it? I'll show you. <sighs> what are you? The garage up ahead. We're turning Phyllis. in. Phyllis. I'm asking the attendant to open the trunk to check the fare. And you're not getting out of the car. Phyllis. Yes, ma'am. What'll it be? One of my tires feels a little soft. Would you check the air for me? Okay, ma'am, sure. And would you take a look at the spare, too? Yes, ma'am, sure will. Phyllis, listen. It's louder. He'll find out as soon as he opens the trunk. Phyllis, please, there's... Shut just... up. <laughs> that Indian, he knew all about it, the way he laughed and spoke about his heart. Who oh, turned the radio on? Who? 32, right, and he's here. Same on the spare, ma'am? Please. Phyllis, no. For heaven's sake... He's found it. He... No. It can't be. They're all okay, ma'am. Anything else? Thank you, no. Here, this is for you. Thanks. Have you uh, looked in your trunk lately, ma'am? <gasps> no. Why? Kind of messy. Must rattle when you're going fast. Oh. I'll fix it when we get home. Bye. Bye. Well, there's your heartbeat. You heard him, didn't you? A rattle. Tool rattling. Where's your beating heart now? 
I I don't hear it. I don't hear a thing. <laughs> Phyllis, you better pull over. Let them pass. What is it, an ambulance? Police. Pull over, lady. Okay, lady. Let's see your driver's license. Why, why, what's the trouble? Never mind. Let's see the license. Here. Uh, Fellas back here, huh? Yes. Out of the car, both of you. Okay, Joe. Let's take a look in that trunk. Okay. Trunk? Why do you, why do you want to look in the trunk? God. Lucky that gas station attendant called. Yeah. Mrs. Bagley, what's in that sack? Uh, I, I don't know. I... Uh, well, we'll soon see. Give me a hand, Joe. Okay. Uh. What's it look like to you? It's him, all right. Mike Hasley. No. No. I told you. I told you. No. Oh, no, not that. No. What I'd like no. to know is why they did it this no. way. Sticking him full of no. little holes and blowing his brains out and then drowning him. No. I don't get it. No, stop it. Stop it, Hart. Stop it. Joe, Joe, no. no. grab her. Joe, no. good Lord. She's trying to kill him all over again. Man may be dead, but death is no end, for his heart will go on beating endlessly in the brain of the murderer, endlessly until a gallows trap is sprung, and the murderer's brain, too, is dead, having paid in full the price for... Murder! At Remember to be with us again when death's footsteps echo in the deserted streets and the clocks strike twelve for... Murder at Midnight! Elspeth Eric and Louis Van Ruten were heard as Mrs. and Mr. Bagley. With music by Charles Paul, Murder at Midnight was directed by Anton M. Leader. Thank <laughs> you.